Hi everyone, um, this week's art journal prompt is layers. This video I don't think gets off to a very good start. I have an idea in my head and it doesn't quite go to plan to start with <laughs> but bear with it because it does it does get better. This is the page about halfway through um, where you know I'm happy with, with what I've got and I continue and I end up with a page that um, I just absolutely love um, but I want everybody to persevere with this um, and just get crazy crazy busy. Just be brave, just go for it. There's lots of tips that I give you throughout um, throughout this video. Um, so I want busy, busy, busy this week and I really look forward to seeing what everybody decides to come up with. Um, as you know, I work loose leaf and glue my pages in afterwards, but my pages come from a spiral bound mixed media pad. And so I always end up with um, lots of lots of these left over. And so I've decided to use them. Um, now, I work with two different sizes of paper. I've got the really large one here, which is um, the, the centerpiece, um, but pr primarily um, this size here. And so I've just um, cut my pieces down um, into sort of like <laughs> Uh, graduating them so I'm just cutting sort of more of these pieces off off the top until it fades away to um, one and then I'm just going to glue that down with some um, matte medium right I've glued everything down um, and it's more or less dry so and I've cut around the um, edges and I'm just going to go over with some regular white white gesso so I'm just going to coat the whole of the, the page including the areas that don't have any of this um, paper on them. Now I've decided I'm going to paint um, with some of my Dilutions paints. I've got the orange, squeezed orange and bubblegum pink. I've decided I'm going to apply it with my with my finger because I don't want the paint going everywhere and I just feel that if I use my finger um, I've got more control over where, where I put it and I want to use a mixture of pinks and, um, and orange as well and so I'm just going to be quite random about it, I think, and hope that I don't end up with a big hot mess. Um, if I do, I can always gesso over it and start again. So we'll see. I'm just going to go with the flow. So I'm just going to, as I say, keep going with, with this. Oh, I was going to do orange, wasn't I? And I've um, just come in with pink. Oh, well, never mind. Let's add some orange over the top and maybe add some pink over the top of, of that and see see what happens. I might even um, use a spray bottle um, with this. Now I've picked up some of the pink and the orange on my on my finger um, so I really am being random about this, not thinking about it, just just going with it. Be careful if you decide to do this because you want colours that are next to each other on the colour wheel because otherwise you'll end up with, with mud. And we don't like mud, do we? That's how I'm looking so far and I've given it a quick dry. It's, it's not completely dry, it's just taken some of the wetness out of it. And I've also popped some um, gesso down onto um, my craft mat as well. And I'm just going to try and sort of get some um, white in there as well. I might need a bit more than, than that. And I think what I want to do um, now, this might not work, but I'm going to give it a, a go anyway. I'm going to spray it um, and just see if I can get any kind of drippage out towards the edges, just to add some colour to the background. And I am not, because um, I didn't want anything sort of too too heavy, but um, oh, that's, um, that's working. Here we go. Can you see? Now I feel as if I want to knock back some of the streaks that I've got um, on the outside. I feel as if I've gone a bit overboard. So I've put some more white gesso um, onto um, my um, mat and I'm just going to see if I can scrape it um, on into the background so that we get some texture from from that. Let's just see what um, what happens. This might be a complete fail. Who knows? Who knows? We're experimenting here and if you don't experiment you never you know you never will find the next great technique so just go for it and, you know it's paper we can throw it in the bin if it's a complete and utter at a flop let's just keep doing keep doing this twisting it round you see that's looking better already that was a, a wise move I think I've got some of the um, pink and orange left um, on my palette and I've got the urge to just come in 
with the tip of a paintbrush and add some random circles over my page. I'm not sure how well it's going to take on this bumpy texture, but you know, it doesn't matter. We'll just go for it anyway and see what we end up with. This is completely intuitive. I have no idea where I'm going with this page or what I want to end up with, but you know, that's fine. It doesn't matter. Um, as I've said, we might not end up with anything decent at all. We shall, we shall see. All right, there we go. I'm going to clean my rubber off and I'm going to do exactly the same thing with, um, with some of this orange. Right, my dots are dry and I've just decided that I want to add some of my Intense, in ink tense blocks. Um, I've wet the orange and the pink and let's just see if we can sort of add some of, some of this. I want some more water there and just try and um, get some more of that pink. I'll add some more up here too. Let's see what happens if we sort of add some solid colour because of course we've got all that lovely texture going on in the background. It might work, who knows? We have nothing to lose at this stage by going for it. I'm going to add some of the orange in a, in a second as, as well. Let's just see what happens. This is a real Nina harebrain idea. Right, let's have some of the orange. See what we end up with um, there. might sort of uh, bring this piece to together a bit, a bit. It might not, who knows? Right, let's spray it and get it to mingle and see what we end up with. Well, it's starting to look better than it, than it did. I don't know what your thoughts are, but um, that to me looks better than it did a minute ago. Now this is pretty dry um, right now and I don't know, I'm starting to um, get a feel for it I think and it's calling for me to put some um, squares on the, on the page. So I'm just going to put some down here in this dark, dark contrasting blue. Um, I think we'll have some here too and maybe we have one running off there, I don't know. I, in fact I'm going to carry that up as well. I'm just going with what I'm being called to do. Right, there we go. And I just really like actually how I can see um, the orange poking through. I've also got some um, pale blue. That one there was the De La Rowney and Ultra Marine. I've also got some of the um, Amsterdam Sky Blue Light. Before um, I do anything with the circle, I've got the urge to add the lighter blue over the over the top. I like that. Isn't it funny how sometimes you just, I don't know, feel compelled to do something. Right, now I'm going to add my blue circles. I'm going to try not to think about it as well and I feel now as though I want to add some more of the blue circles I'm just going to keep going I'm going to do the same thing and go over the top with that blue I'm pressing quite lightly because I don't want to cover completely everything that's um, that's there now I'm feeling that I still want to come back in and continue just this line here. I don't know. Something isn't working for me. And do I want to do that one? I'm doing it. Oh gosh, scary, scary. Right, light blue. Now I'm actually starting to really like how this um, this looks. I've grabbed one of my um, paintbrush covers and I'm just going to go over some of these circles if I can see where they are. not sure I'm going to do all of them. I don't know. In fact, you know, I might. I might do all of them. I'm starting to really like how this is looking and I've resisted the urge, although the circles are not symmetrical, um, I've resisted the urge to put them where there wasn't um, a dot. But what um, I've decided to do now is go over the top of the pale blue circles um, with some of the dilutions 
bubblegum pink. Don't know why, just something is telling me to do it. Just to sort of, you know, bring some of that pink back as well. Now I feel as if I want to add some of the orange back in and ideally I'd like to go over the top um, of the squares but I haven't got anything square that's big enough so I'm going to go slightly inside um, and this is just a lid of one of my um, markers which I'm going to be really quick to do this so that the marker doesn't, doesn't dry up but I don't know whether I shall go over all of these. I don't know, we'll, we'll see. Oh, let's just go over them all. There we are. I just love how that looks and it just feels wonderful. It's actually quite um, quite heavy. Um, so, and I've got two pieces, let me show you, to the side here that I've been using all the leftover paint on as well. So I'm gonna go over these with some of the squares. Well, it's now about three days later. And um, the reason for that is that I looked at this piece and I just absolutely love the texture. And I love the fact that um, I've only got the um, edges of the spiral bound paper in this section here, because if you look at it, if you take a small section like that, you've just got an amazing amount of texture and then the texture from the gesso here. Um, now my pages are seven by seven and a half inches, which is perfect size to make six um, ATCs and so that's what I want to do with this. So I decided to take it off to the printers hence the fact that I couldn't work it on it until three days later. I went um, late yesterday afternoon um, and had this blown up um, onto various pieces of paper. I had it photocopied directly onto a piece of mixed media paper and so I'm going to continue working on this journal page on this. So I'm going to cut that out um, in a minute um, but I just love this so much I decided to have it photocopied and blown up onto other pieces of paper as well and just just look let me just check that you can you can see that most of it's in in shot um, so as I've, I've said to you before if you have a fantastic background that you really love photocopy it um, so I'm going to go off and um, and cut this piece of mixed media paper down and we'll we'll carry on right I've cut my piece of mixed media paper um, out um, the photocopied version and I'm just going to add some um, pattern with this Claudine Helmuth stamp. Um, I don't know what the stamp set was was called but if you google Claudine Helmuth or look on Amazon you'll, you'll probably find it um, and I'm just going to add some more um, stamping. Um, where do I want it? Don't think about it Nina, just do it. Just wanted to bring in some more of this gorgeous orange. There we go. Um, just to give you a sneak peek, this is how um, my mop-up sheets are looking. Um, I've still got the orange paint there and I've decided I'm going to add some smaller circles. This is the orange, squeezed orange, whoops-a-daisy, Dilusions paint by the way, I forgot to um, mention what I was using. And I'm just going to add a few clusters of circles. I just love the colours in this page. I just think it's gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous, really sunny and, um, and vibrant. I just love how this page looks. The colours are just gorgeous. I love the shapes. Um, but now I'm going to add some more of the ultramarine blue. Um, here, we, here we go. It's the Dale Rowney. Um, and I'm using another one of the Claudine Helmuth um, stamps. Oh, gorgeous. Just love that. I just really like that. Um, no, happy with that. Um, and then again, I'm just going to add um, some of this leftover paint onto these sheets here. Now the blue that I've added is quite bold. And so I'm going to use um, the stars out of my Gina Aaron's stamp set. It's this one um, here. And I'm just, I've got some white gesso on my pad. And let me just stamp it off. Let's have a look and see if we can get sort of, well, I'm just going to add a few of, of these. Yay, I like that. Now 
Oh, apologies. I forgot to um, press record on the camera. I've got my trusty handy dandy credit card and I'm just adding lines. I've got quite a few on the page already, as you can see, just um, going in various directions. You can see that they're scattered all over this page and I just love the way that that looks. And I'm just trying to make this as busy as I possibly can with as many overlapping um, details as possible. Right, in for a penny, in for a pound, let's go for it. The amount of detail on this is just um, incredible. I just really love it. And I think I am going to leave it, leave it there. And I know I said this was done, um, but I can't resist coming in and adding one final layer. I've got another one of these um, round sponges and some of my Dilusions bubblegum pink. And I'm just going to add some more circles. Still not finished guys. <laughs> I don't know, every time I do a layer, I just know what I want to do next. This time I'm using um, a spent um, glue stick tube lid and I'm going to go over um, where I've put the pink dots in orange. Oh, I just love that. And again, because I'm using the same colours repeatedly over and over again, um, I just never end up with a horrible mess. Um, and on this, more is definitely more. Right, that's had a good dry. And now I've put some more of the ultramarine blue and I've got a little tiny square that I've cut out of a piece of magic sponge. Um, and I just cut it with my craft knife. And I'm going to use this to stamp with. And again, I'm just going to overlap Love how this looks, gorgeous, gorgeous. Right, the next layer, um, I've just cut out a square from this piece of packaging here and I'm just going to go over the top of the blue squares, like so. I just love all the detail on this page. I just think it's um, just coming together beautifully. I also think whilst I've got um, this little piece of packaging in my hand, I've turned it round the other way and I'm just going to go over some of these pink areas here just to add another another layer and to add some more, more white as well because I just think white brightens everything up. I just love that. Oh, that is just so gorgeous. And we can turn it around the other way and do the same again. Now we're almost done with this background. I just want to um, use this um, paintbrush lid and I've got some white gesso on my mat and I'm just going to come in with some of the layering circles in white this time. And there we are, that's my finished background. I absolutely love it. I just think the colours are gorgeous. Let me just hold it up to you so that you can see some of the detail. I just love that. Right, now I'm about to get brave. Um, I printed out a load of star shapes because I've got the stars um, in the background. I thought that would be quite nice um, to use. So I printed out um, different sizes of uh, star shapes and cut them out and then I, drew, I cut them onto cardstock and I drew around the shapes onto a photocopied piece of mixed media paper. I just photocopied it um, like this um, and then I cut the shapes out and that's what, I, that's what I've got. Um, so if I turn all these um, over, as I say this is another photocopied um, piece and what I want to do now um, is grab, let's just grab this, grab a piece of tracing paper and I'm going to use some of the indigo blue. Um, this is the De La Rami graduate acrylic and uh, this is where it gets scary. Right, okay, so I'm going to put some of that um, on this tracing paper and I'm going to add some glazing medium. You could just add water. Water would work in exactly the same way. It's just that I have glazing um, medium and I'm going to use it. 
and then I'm just looking for something to um, stir this with. I'm going to mix this in and this will make the um, paint more transparent so that you can still see um, the pattern from the stars um, through the paint. Okay, so there we go. Let's uh, wipe that off. And then I've got a makeup sponge here. Um, let me just use another piece of um, tracing paper as well to contain the mess. Oh gosh, right, let's go for it. This is only a photocopy, so if it all goes horribly wrong, it really doesn't matter. And I'm going to add some paint to my sponge and, and dab it off like this. And I'm going to paint over all the stars like this and you can see that you can still see all that gorgeous pattern underneath because I've used the glazing medium as I say water will do much the same thing and so I'm going to do this to all the stars and let those dry and then I'll be back. I just absolutely love how that looks um, and I think I'm going to position them something like that but what I want to do first is go around the edges of these with um, some embossing powder so I've got my embossing pen again and I'm going to take each of the, in fact, I think I'll start off with the thin end. I'm going to take these stars and I'm just going to outline the edge of the stars like this with my embossing pen. This is just embossing ink in pen form. Like that. And then I shall add my embossing powder. In fact, let me just open out my piece of um, tissue paper. And then the embossing powder will stick to the pen. There we go. Tap off the um, excess. And again, I shall do what I usually do and just grab a fine paintbrush. Here we go. I've got one here and just get rid of any of the bits of um, embossing powder that I don't want. Because, of course, once you've dried it, that's it. You're stuck with all those bits and then just push that to one side for a minute. Let's just get rid of, rid of that. I'll put that back in in a minute. Grab my heat tool. Let's just let that heat up for a second. And let that melt and just look how gorgeous and bright the edges are. I've missed a bit here, but I can go over it. That's fine. Oh, I just love that. And here's my finished page. I just absolutely love how this has turned out. Um, I carried on um, adding the embossing powder to the stars. Um, and I also um, added an embossed border to my page as well. And then I glued the stars um, in using tacky glue. Um, and when that was dry, I went around the edge of the stars with my Derwent Graphic um, line marker, just with some black scribbly lines. Um, and then finally, just to finish it off, I used the um, Small Talk, Tim Holt Small Talk, and added um, a couple of quotes trust your crazy ideas sometimes you have to take chances and creativity takes courage and that's finished my page um, now I had this finished page um, photocopied again at the printers on mixed media paper um, and I have three copies done and here we go I just love that background so much that um, I decided to do a whole page just with it as it is as well and I've just added the quote embrace beautiful chaos and um, I've inked around the edges with black stays on um, ink um, and I've still got one of the finished pieces um, left as well. Here we go. There it is. So that's another copy on mixed media paper. In fact, that, that is the original one that I had, had um, copied. So the, these two here are just um, photocopies. That's the original. And I'm going to keep that so that if ever I want to photocopy it and, um, and do more things with it. I mean, that would make fantastic washi tape. I can have it blown up larger, do whatever I want to do with it. Now, when I added the blue circles in the, in the indigo, with the um, Claudine Helmuth um, stamp. I wasn't sure whether I'd made the right choice and because I'd already got um, a couple of photocopies of the original piece here, um, I was able to do, do the same thing again with the um, orange squares um, and 
just to see whether I'd made um, the right choice. And it's funny because when I showed the boys, um, this one here and this one, they both preferred the, the finished piece. They just feel that this one stands out a lot more. So what do you think? Which one do you prefer? That one, should I have stopped much earlier or did I make the right choice to carry carry on going crazy, crazy busy? So that's the um, original piece where I stopped. Um, this is the one with all the texture from um, those pieces um, of the spiral bound edges. And I'm going to cut this up and make it into, into ATCs. And so I'll show you another video where I decide what I'm going to do um, with that. But I hope you liked what um, I've created here. Let me know which page you prefer as well. Do you like the one with the stars or do you just like the, the background just with the with the quote on? Um, anyway, I hope you liked that. And I'd really appreciate it if you would give me a thumbs up as uh, if you did, because it just let YouTube know that you like what um, I'm doing. And as always, I just love to hear your, your comments. Um, I just want to say a huge thank you to everybody who takes the time to comment every week. I, it just inspires me and just I, I just love reading your, your wonderful comments. So thank you very much indeed for, for those. And I look forward to seeing what everybody else decides to create for um, this week's um, prompt. And for anybody who'd like to join a supportive um, Art Journal group, I'll leave the link to our Facebook group, Art Journal Prompts, in the description box below. So take care everyone and I'll see you all again soon. Bye for now.